Thank you. Uh, anybody, uh, anybody color their hair? Does anybody know anybody that knows somebody that knows somebody that colors their hair? I do it. I do it. I did it just, you know, the gray starts creeping up on you. If it doesn't, if you haven't started, you will. You will. You don't have any many people that are walking around, you know, white hair. I'm proud of it, man. Next time. Start. So anyway, I was, uh, this weekend I was touching up, you know, touching up the gray. You know, came over to the sink a little bit and uh, I started, you know, to, uh, you know, you get the little tube, you mix a little stuff together and the, oh, we're hovering over the sink, you know. And, uh, you know, I was in a hurry, because I guess you're supposed to put all kind of cream and all kind of stuff. Like so I started putting it on, and like, oh, my God. It started to go over into my left eye. Start going into my left eye. I opened, the, I opened my eye, and I looked in the mirror, and I swear to you, I look like Mike Tyson. I had that little thing. And I started, you know, getting a little, I was like, oh, this is preposterous, you know. It's like, you know, I didn't stick and move, and I got a black eye. And I, and I seriously, I don't know, I got bleeds and stuff, I started wiping them, but I would have had the Mike Tyson tattoo on my face. Because, so if anybody out there, know anybody, just be careful, make sure you do it right and take your time, or you'll have that look on your face, you know, you have that, uh, some people say scary, I don't know. I don't judge. Anybody uh, go to, ever go to cosmetology school, save a few bucks, instead of going to a regular barber? I do, you know, every, you know, three months or whenever I gotta, you know, touch some stuff up. I went to, uh, I went to get my hairline, you know, and uh, I think the dude thought that, uh, that the color was actually hair. And so he just kept like, and I don't know, I never had a tattoo, but I guess I've, what I've seen from tattoos, it was feeling like I was getting a tattoo. He was just like, he kept just going, and, and guys, you know how we like to be cool and under control and macho, you know. Any woman would have had common sense and would have said, ah, you're hurting me, you you know, whatever, you know, stop it, you know. I'm sitting there just trying to be like, oh, okay, you know, and, and, and I'm dying. I'm dying in pain. He's just like, zzz, 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 you know. I thought I was in the Twilight movie or something like that, and the dude was going to come up. Okay, we got him where we want him now. Okay, yeah, get the neck now. <laughs> you know, the Mike Tyson ear thing, I was just like, I don't know, I was all confused. All confused. So this is uh, summertime. This is the time when... Uh, our neighbors from hell come out of hibernation. Anybody have neighbors from hell? By applause. Is anybody that neighbor from hell? Yep. Okay. That's okay. Full disclosure. Just, you know, to be honest, you know, I've had people in my audience that say, you know, I am that neighbor from hell. I had a had a neighbor one time, you know, this is back in the day I had a had a house, you know, I was trying to do the American dream thing and uh, you know, was working two jobs and stuff and come home. My, my my neighbors they were retired. So they would sit back, you know, with their arms folded, you know, looking at me coming home and uh, their yard was perfectly manicured. Perfect, you know, and they would always point out something that was wrong with my David, could you get that dandelion and it's going to blow in and it's going to cause us to get weeds in our, okay, you know. Anyway, they finally stopped. You know what, you know how they finally stopped? They died. So there's hope, there's, there's hope, there's hope. If you ever have neighbors from hell, you know, that may happen. It may, nature may cleanse your worries and your trouble. No, they just have natural causes. You know, they were retired, so it's, it's natural causes. So don't look at me, you know, thinking, uh, please, no, that's, that's her saying that. Uh, no. Uh, had, a, had a neighbor that uh, had a rooster. You know, that's really cool. You want to get some? <laughs> a rooster in your neighborhood waking you up at the crack of dawn. That's when I started not hating cats so much. The cat lady was looking pretty good to me. 
you know, I wanted to work out a deal with her, you know, to, uh, and I think something happened. Stop hearing from the rooster. There were neighbors that had a dog that somehow liked to see what it was barking, and it would get over the fence. It, it figured something out. I kid you not. There's a trampoline, and the dog would like, would elevate itself, would jump on the trampoline to look over and bark at you and keep your life miserable. Neighbors from hell. Neighbors from hell. There are things that I don't like. There are things that I like. Sometimes it's easy. You don't know what you like, but there are things you know that you don't like. I got a fear of heights. I don't like uh, anybody. Somebody, somebody feel me on that. So, yeah. I like, you know, it seems like whenever I try to go on a roller coaster ride or something like that, when it's time to get off of that sucker, I'm totally airborne. I'm Big Bird, waiting for them to, you know, and they're letting the people off down there at the bottom. I'm like, hey, oh, ah, you know, but I get that man thing, you know, I just like try to bite my tongue and try to be cool, but I'm dying inside, you know, all up in the air, 100 feet up in the air, waiting to come down. It's like, okay, enough of this, you know. You don't want to get them mad or else they keep you up there longer. Go, ha, <laughs> ah. What else don't I like? I don't like doing the dishes. Anybody feel me on that? Yeah. I, think there, I think a lot of domestic violence emanates from doing the dishes. There are just a lot of arguments and, uh, you know, uh, no sexual encounters because somebody didn't do the dishes or something. I, I know when it was... When we were kids, my mom, she was really serious about it. She was the enforcer, you know, as far as inspecting if the dishes were done right. When she Because eventually she got to the point to where, hey, put that back. What do you, no, you all are learning how to do the dishes. Yeah, I don't care if you're four or five. Get up at that sink, you know, and learn how to, you know. So if you don't have a dishwasher, if you don't have plastics over where doing dishes can be, can be a, a, major, a major thing. I, I don't like... Um, I don't like uh, chivalry all the time. Uh, as a dude, doesn't always work for me. Especially, if, I love you ladies, don't get me wrong. You know, if I can do it, I'll do it. But you know, there's certain instances, you know, just for example, maybe, you know, she's, you know, you ladies, you try to wear the, the long high heels, you know, and you, you always got shoes that just don't hurt, fit your feet right, that hurt your feet. You know, and when I've had ladies say, you know, can you carry me to the car? I don't because uh, my feet hurt so you know, some, sometimes they're testing your manhood, you know what I mean, to see if, you, you know, if you're strong enough or whatever, or to see how bad you really want something that night, and how, you know, how, you, I failed that test many times, you know, if I look at her, she's like, you know, her gut is as big as mine, or whatever, or she's like strong, you know, I'm like, you know, honey, can I drag you on the, with the blanket, and we, like, no, shock. And you know you're not getting none. You can't recover. <laughs> Impossible. Final thing, and I don't know if you can relate to this. You know, we all have our bubble. We have like our personal space. And uh, if you've ever been in an in a elevator, or if you've been on the max or the bus and something, you know, there's a game. And all of a sudden, people come and just invade your space. They're all up in your space. They're in your face. You know, they're gonna, you know, you just. You got to figure some way, you know, you want to claim your space, your circle. How can you do that? How can you do that tactfully? Here, here's, here's just some idea. Just went, you just said, everybody, look, okay, wait a minute, stop. I had a bean burrito for lunch, and I'm ready to blow. Unless you back off. Give me my circle, give me my space, or I'm going to blow. And you watch people give you a little room now. Yeah? Another, another, an another time when you, you may need to, uh, to claim your space. Ever, anybody travel? Anybody had the TSA pat down experience? Yeah. No, I haven't. I mean, I can't afford to travel. You know, I've gone there just for, you know, kicks or whatever, bring the KY, and, you know, <laughs> I pick out the one I want to go, yeah. Uh huh, right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, that's the only time I've ever gone because I can't afford to fly, go anywhere. But I don't know, I just want to ask a rhetorical question. Is it illegal? Is it illegal if they're like checking your junk and you know, your booty crevices too much to like, oh, excuse me, 
to just really just let a hot one right in their nostrils, you know, singe the hairs in their nostrils, just like, you know, just, you know, is that illegal? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, just, I'm just throwing it out there, you know, just throwing it out there. Okay. <laughs> Do what you will with this information. I love you guys. Great audience. I'm David Little. Have a good time tonight. Good luck, everybody.